Let's see. There we go. Microphone. Welcome to the episode 89 of the Liberty Dad podcast, where we prepare for tomorrow's political conversation by how we engage today. This episode, I interview Richard Perez for treasurer of the Libertarian Party of Florida. These interviews are intended to be tough. And by tough, I don't mean hostile, but candidates will be put into the hot seat. Now, why would I do that? I feel interviews are simply either too soft or too hostile too often. They focus on what we like or dislike about a person rather than whether they can communicate their fitness for a role. Dale Carnegie once said, there are always three speeches for every one you actually gave. The one you practiced, the one you gave, and the one you wish you gave. Any interviews are very similar. There's the one you prepared for, the one you gave, and the one you wish you gave. Once I had a two-hour interview with multiple people, as I left, I was feeling like I missed the mark on a few answers. And then as I drove away, it all caught up and I realized I really missed the mark on some questions. I immediately pulled over, pulled out my phone, and punched out better responses to every question that I could recall, sent that email, and hoped for the best. I didn't get the job. However, the next interview, I nailed it. These interviews are intended to be tough so that each candidate later says to themselves, Man, I should have said this. But a word of caution, just because someone doesn't have an answer or gives what you might think of as an underwhelming answer, it does not necessarily mean that they are not the right fit for the job. It just means that they weren't prepared to answer that question at this time. And hopefully, the next time that they are asked, they will be. The goal isn't to embarrass people or to give them such a tough interview that it leads people to believe they are not ready for that role. It's simply to raise the bar with our expectations of leadership and how we interview, starting with communication. With that, let's dive right in and hear what Richard has to say. Hello, Richard. How are you? Good. How are you doing today, Dio? I'm doing very well. Let me pull up the, uh, make sure that nobody's in the chat saying they can't hear us. I think we're good to go. All right. Let's see. All right. I'm going to take, I'm just going to glance every now and then at the chat people. So if something's up, please let me know. Um, but otherwise we'll do our best to see how things go. All right. So let's get into this. Let's talk right away. Um, let's go ahead and start with introducing yourself. So tell us who is Richard Perez? Tell us what, whatever you want. Go for it. <laughs> All right. Um, so I um I mean you know we're we're talking about the Libertarian Party so I'll try to keep it you know pertinent to that. Sure. Um, I, I was uh, I was born and raised in uh, New Jersey. Um, lived there all my life, uh, right up until my uh, mid to late teens, um, where you know my parents got divorced and I kind of bounced back and forth from Puerto Rico to New Jersey. Uh, lived a little bit of time in New York. So, growing up. Um, my perception of things were from a view seen through, you know, the, the, the politics of New Jersey, New York, mm -hmm. very restricted. Right. Um, in, in, uh, in my experience, if you had a gun, you were a bad guy or you were a cop. Okay. You know what I mean? So kind um, of the I same. Down, uh, sometimes the same. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, a, a lot, a lot of times the same, unfortunately. Right. Um, but I, I moved down to Florida and uh, I started getting into firearms um, in my late 20s. Mm -hmm. And at that point, um, thanks to a few friends uh, that taught me a few things about economics, um, that, that was right around the time of, uh, of the second Ron Paul campaign. Okay. Um, I started lurking, learning about economics. I started learning about um, the Federal Reserve, how, you know, essentially we're indebted to what's a private bank that's really in the, you know, it's private, but it's not private really because it works with the, uh, with the government. Mm -hmm. um, 
And I, I apologize if you hear my dogs barking in the background. I'm trying to keep them calm. That's all right, man. <laughs> hey, you know what? Everybody that watches this show knows that sometimes they'll hear my son. Um, he's actually taking a nap right behind me in the room, uh, room, room next door. So he, you know, he might wake up during the interview, and mm -hmm. um, you know, and sometimes he comes in. Now I have the door locked this time because I'm not on dad duty, but it happens, man. So no big deal. No oh, mark against you there. So, um, so yeah, uh, long story short, you know, I started learning a few, you know, basic ideas of economics, you know, nothing heavy, no Austrian economics or anything like that. Um, I started learning about guns and that kind of started opening my eyes to realize that, you know, I, I was, I was never, I never identified with the Democrats. I never truly identified with the Republicans, mm -hmm. um, even though I was a little more right leaning thanks to the economics and thanks to uh, the gun issues, you know, the, the Republicans are the fiscally responsible party we all know they're not right they claim to be and they claim to be for gun rights we all know they're not mm -hmm. <laughs> um but i never really truly identified with them and uh one one of the first voices that got me a little more into seeing things and uh identifying as libertarian uh was maj Touré. Okay. Um, you know, I, I, I always heard libertarian and I looked it up and I was kind of like, oh yeah, that kind of, you know, that kind of describes me, but I was never really big into politics. Right. Um, right around the time of, you know, 2016, I started getting a little bit more into the politics, um, a you know, following a few more people. And it was I, at that point, I was a single issue voter, mm -hmm. um, you know, and it was all about guns for me. Gotcha. If you're trying to take my guns. You're a tyrant. Okay. That, so that's how I sounds things. legit. Right. <laughs> um, and over the past few, you know, Donald Trump presidency happened. I mean, what a shit show. Uh, mm -hmm. um, I apologize for the language. Sorry. It's all right. We'll, we'll be all right. <laughs> um, I know we, uh, you know, we, we got to 2020 and, you know, absolutely. It, it just, it completely hit the fan. Okay. Um, we all know, you know, I'm sorry. Uh, 2021? No, 2020 was the first year of COVID. I know. It yeah, like such merges all together. You're like, I don't know. <laughs> Has it been like five years or two or a month? I don't it's, know. They they said two weeks and I feel like I got gray hair since then. I don't know. I, I, I definitely have a few in there. Right. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's it's it's, uh, it's definitely been the longest two weeks of anybody's life. Mm -hmm. Um. So that really opened my eyes and... I don't want to say I was a full on anarchist, but I had absolutely zero trust in the government. OK. And I didn't you know, I, I didn't like anything I was seeing from any side of the political spectrum. Right. And, um, you know, the. Uh, the our, our last presidential campaign, unfortunately, was somewhat underwhelming, mm -hmm. um, you know, granted, you know, the mainstream media portrayed it as, you know, this is you, you either have to vote left or you have to vote right which we know that that's what they do. Um, but, you know, they, 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 they've been radicalizing everybody. And I was radicalized to one end where I just completely lost complete faith in any sort of government. Um, I would have related probably as a minarchist mm -hmm. uh, before uh, the 2020 election. Whereas at this point, you know, I, I can't relate as anything but an anarchist. I, don't, I okay. can't think of a single thing that the government can do that the private sector can't do better. Gotcha. Now, let me interrupt here real quick. So yeah. we have some, um, I, I have some guests, or not guests, I have some followers and some listeners, I believe, that aren't necessarily in the Libertarian Party. Now, this interview may not be terribly exciting for them because they won't know a lot of this <laughs> stuff. But going on what you just said there, you said, you know, you're talking about minarchist, anarchist. Can you, mm -hmm. for anybody that's listening that may be slightly unfamiliar with the term, can you just kind of break it down in a few sentences, but with the differences? Yeah, absolutely. So minarchists, um, you know, they believe that the government should be in charge of just basic few things, mm -hmm. uh, national security, um, you know, maybe some public health things, roads, small things like that, but mm -hmm. minimal, absolute minimal government, you know, no government intervention, complete decentralization, um, you know, Florida deals with Florida, New York deals with New York, you know, we're, we're, all, we're only related because we're all part of the same country, but that's it. You know, their government does what they want over there. We do what we want over here. Mm -hmm. um, if there is to be a federal government, it is strictly existing uh, just to prevent, um, you know, the 
the smaller governments from infringing on their people's rights. Right. Um, okay. Anarchism is just no government, self-governance, um, no government that's, that doesn't necessarily mean no laws, which is a common misconception. Mm -hmm. You know, we can still within my neighborhood, within our city agree that, you know, you're not supposed to do certain things. And that's where, you know, uh, the non-aggression principle comes in handy, you know, as a baseline. Um, and I feel like there's a, you know, it's, it's, it's probably a longer conversation for another day, but I feel like there's a lot of the whole non-aggression principle. Right. It's always been around. Um, like for example, in the 10 commandments, a lot of that could be boiled down to the non-aggression principle. Okay. You know? Um, but I feel like that's, that's always been human nature that if, okay, you know, we, we, we need to establish some ground rules, you know, don't aggress on each other. Mm -hmm. Don't be the initiator of violence on your fellow man. And right. You know, that, that's what it boils down to. All right. Awesome. I appreciate that. Um, and so let's get into it here. There we are. I'm trying to shift my screens a little bit. Uh, trying to be fancy, you know, when you're fancy, you got a lot of more, a lot more work to do and it's really tough. At any rate, let's get right into uh, what, you know, the meat of the interview. So you are currently the region two rep, and then you're also a member on the fundraising committee. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Okay. Awesome. So let's start with the region two rep role. Um, first and foremost, go ahead and describe what this role entails. You don't have to be super duper in depth, just kind of give an overview of what this role entails. So the uh, re region two is a, um, I, it's a small region. It's not really small. There's just not a lot of activity in it because unfortunately it's a very isolated region uh, in the Florida panhandle. Um, we have uh, an affiliate in Bay County um, that is uh, more and more active every day. And I've, I've been focusing on them. Um, when I first took on the role, I was traveling for work. Mm -hmm. um, I was, I was working uh, across the entire state. I literally my, my territory was from Pensacola uh, down to Key Largo. So, I mean, the, the only place I didn't visit across the entire state was Key West. Um, but I was able to travel up there a little more often. And um, so I, I focused on them trying to get them a little more organized, get them right. to grow. Um, I had a lot of help from the current treasurer, uh, Patrick Leisner, mm -hmm. um, who, you know, I worked hand in hand with. So thanks a lot to Patrick. Um, thanks a lot to uh, Joey up there, who's now the chair, and uh, David. Um, they were in very open communication, letting me know what was going on. Um, you know, when they needed something from the EC, mm -hmm. uh, I would help them out. Um, the role, so to just to break it down, the role of a region rep is to help affiliate the, the, the counties that are there in that region and to assist anything that they need. Uh, once affiliated. Okay. So unfortunately, we weren't able to uh, get any other counties affiliated. Um, shortly after I took on the role, uh, I took on a new job, which moved me even further south. And I haven't really been able to go up there and be a little more active. Um, but I did have the pleasure of attending a, a one meetup up there with, uh, with with the Bay County guys. Gotcha. Okay. So let me ask you then, because I, I know there's seven, or I'm sorry, eight counties that are up there in Region 2, uh, Bay, Holmes, Washington, Jackson, Calhoun, Gulf, Liberty, and Franklin. So the other seven, um, you know, what, what is the issue? Why, can, can you explain why there aren't any affiliates there, right? Or, or yeah, yeah, that's how I want to say it. There aren't any affiliates. So I, I don't, uh, not to make excuses or anything like that. Um, when I first took on the role, I got the voter rolls uh, for all the registered libertarians mm -hmm. across all the counties. And I knew Bay was affiliated. So I said, let me look at all the other ones first. And uh, the, the one that stood out, uh, Liberty County, which, you know, I, oddly enough, it's named Liberty County. You'd say, right. yeah, you know, libertarian. That, that sounds right. awesome. Um, you go to Liberty County, there's four registered libertarians. Oh, wow. Uh, in the county. So I looked at the other counties and, you know, some were a little more promising. There was 60, uh, you know, 70 here, 20 there. So I was like, okay, you know, this is a little bit better. And then you look at Bay County, which, you know, it's, it's not the most active affiliate, but they're, uh, they're getting a little more active. They got, a, they got a little more motion going on. Um, again, thanks to those guys that, that, uh, that I mentioned earlier, they're doing a lot of good work up there. Um, but Bay County had 600 registered libertarians. Okay. Um, so, you know, it's, it seems like 
they just haven't had enough outreach into those counties. Okay. Um, which unfortunately I haven't been able to really push as much. Cause like I said, I took on a new job and, uh, at that point it was kind of just a support role, uh, from down here on the South side of, uh, of the state. Gotcha. Okay. So I, I, I get that you got a new role uh, or a new mm -hmm. job and I hate the idea of us, any of us, not just you or anybody. And I know you're not saying this necessarily, but I hate the idea of, well, oh, I'm a volunteer because I look at it and I say, hey, if you've, if you've taken on a role, you need to deliver something, right? And, and, yeah, absolutely. And, 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 and it doesn't mean that, you know, like, hey, if you don't knock it out of the park, well, you were a terrible person for that particular role. It just means like, hey, we should hold the standard up high. So one of my, my next question here on that, because what you're aiming for, you're aiming to go to state treasurer, which I assume mm -hmm. means you would leave, you would you intend to leave the region two representative role because I don't think you can. I, yeah, I, I, you cannot you cannot serve as both. Right. So how are you? Le Bay County is currently the only one that's affiliated. So how are mm -hmm. you leaving Bay County better off than when you first got there? So the, uh, the, the people that are in charge now, they've been a little more active. Okay. Um, we've, we've worked out a few events where we've also involved the, the neighboring counties. Um, and that's a way that I've tried to bring them into the fold mm -hmm. um, is by outreach into those counties to try to get them involved with the Bay County so they can see what it can be like. Gotcha. Because part of, uh, part of the problem, I think, is, um, you know, you, you need three people to be affiliated, to have an official... Mm -hmm. uh, affiliate of your county right you need a chair you need a vice chair and you need a secretary and treasurer who the secretary and treasurer could be can be the same person right so at a minimum you need three people okay and yep. i feel like there's uh there's a bit of an issue with region reps just saying okay let's get these three people let's get you guys affiliated um and then they, they affiliate a county and then they kind of leave them out to dry. You know, they, they hang them out to dry where they don't get a ton of support. They don't know what they're supposed to be doing. They don't know what they should be doing. So, you know, the, the groundwork I wanted to lay was just to get people active, see what an active affiliate looks like. Mm -hmm. So that the next, uh, the next region two representative, which hopefully, um, you know, Patrick Leisner, who's our current treasurer mm -hmm. and who's been, you know, my, con my main contact in the region, um, he's going to be running for region two representative. We're basically going to be switching roles. I gotcha. Um, and, and I'm hoping that, you know, it leaves him in a little bit of a better position to, you know, get those people a little more active. And as they're getting more active, uh, work into, you know, getting those counties affiliated. Gotcha. Awesome. Yeah. I see he's in the chat here watching and I'm a little on the awesome. older side, so I'm not sure if I'm seeing this right, but I think he said to give you hell. Um, yeah, I, I could be misreading that. I'm not sure, but, um, I, I wouldn't I'm, expect anything less. So, all right. Awesome. So let's, let's talk about the fundraising committee. So you're a member there and yes. what we all know what fundraising is. It's, you know, getting money, right? But absolutely. There's usually more specific goal. So what was the goal of this committee for this last term? Um, T tough to say. I mean, it's, it's always like you said, at the end of the day, it's, you know, raise more funds. Right. Um, one of the things that I know was, uh, was a project that was, it, it was before my time on the fundraising mm -hmm. committee, Okay. but it's something we made happen while I was on the fundraising committee. Not that I'm trying to take any sort of, uh, uh of credit for this. Um, but something that the committee was able to do was, uh, we, we, this year we started a, uh, an actual contractor. Okay. Who works works for the LPF is paid by the LPF, and um, they're paid specifically to help uh, with the fundraising committee. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's a uh, development director, I believe, is the the official title. Okay. Um, but you know that they, they work uh, part time to push and uh, um, to to push for the fundraising, um, making phone calls, getting old donors back onto the donor rolls. Mm -hmm. uh, planning events, that type of thing. Um, we also, uh, came very close and we think that it's going to happen soon enough. Uh, but we want a specific event planner for the LPF. And that's something else that, you know, we're, we're pushing for. And hopefully in this next term, uh, you know, in the next few months, we're going to be able to see that so that we can start hosting regular events all across the state, 
um, you know, from Jacksonville to Pensacola, down to Miami, down to the Keys, um, you know, Orlando, Tampa, get, get hit all the big cities mm-hmm. and get people in the fold, get them involved and, uh, you know, let, let, let them realize that there's there are people out there that think the same way that they do, mm-hmm. you know, that want freedom. And, you know, we're here. We're all here to work together. We're all here to, you know, to 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 make a better future um, and have a good time while we're doing it. Awesome. Yeah, absolutely. Even, you know, even just because we're working doesn't mean we can't have a little fun and, and enjoy it a little bit. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. So uh, my next question is, you know, so it seems like this committee was basically kind of just kind of continuing on the work of the prior committee. And um, so what role did you play during this term? Like, like, how did you assist, you know, the the, the continuation of um, wasn't that the 25 by 100 or something like that? Was that what they were doing? Um, yeah, what 100 at 25 is uh, our current push. Mm hmm. Um, we want, we're, we're, uh, our goal is to get a hundred people who are donating, donating at least $25 a month. Right. Um, which doesn't seem like a lot, but our, our state does not allow, uh, political parties to charge membership dues. Right. Um, a lot of other states do, and you know, their, uh, their coffers are regularly filled because of this. Gotcha. Um, so they, they're in better positions financially because they do require, people to be a dues paying membership in order to be a delegate in order to have a voice in the party, things like that. Mm -hmm. We don't. So we need to require, we we, we need to rely on everybody's good wills. So 100 at 25, you know, there was a, there was a few things to that. Um, Depending on how much you donated, uh, whether, you know, it was just a basic $25 or whether you were a little bit higher um, everything from uh, membership pins to Mm -hmm. uh, extra perks uh, we even had a few um, uh, a few speeches given by uh, you know big name uh, libertarians uh, such as Larry Sharp, mm-hmm. uh, Spike uh, Spike Cohen came on and gave one our last uh, okay vice uh, our last last vice presidential nominee. Um, so you know a c- couple of things, couple of cool perks, and uh, we're planning on expanding you know on that program. And you know obviously ev- everything's got to evolve. You can't keep the same thing right. And, you know, expect it to continue giving you higher and higher results. You need to make things evolve in order for them to get better. Right. So back to back to my question, what was your role in all that this this last term? So um, they, there weren't specific roles in the fundraising okay. uh, committee. Um, I was kind of an ideas guy. I would, you know, hop on the meetings. We would discuss, you know, what was going on. Um, I'd throw a few ideas out there. Mm-hmm. Um, and I mean, I've, I've always been the type that, hey, you need me to do this. Okay, cool. I'll jump on this. You need me to do that. Okay, cool. I'll jump on that. Uh, we had a uh, holiday party, you know, that I helped out with some of the planning, um, some of the ideas for, you know, the things going on within that holiday party and, you know, things like that. Okay. Gotcha. So now let's kind of wrap it up on those two, those two roles. So you Mm -hmm. can, and you can choose from either one that you, to answer these next couple of questions, right? So what regrets do you have um, as you look back over the time that you spent in either role, either the region two rep or the, as a committee member, like when you look back and you're like, "Mm, I could have done better or I shouldn't have done that or, or, or what have you. So this is, uh, I mean, I, I, uh, just got involved with politics, Mm -hmm. um, actually, you know, being actively involved, um, at the, towards the beginning of last year. Um, so I am very inexperienced in everything that I, that I do. And I've kind of just jumped in, you know, the deep end and (laughs) figured it out as I've gone along. Right. Um, so, you know, in, in region two, um, I wish I could have spent more time up there. Um, I, you know, had I known that I wasn't going to be, uh, able to travel up there as much as I, as, as, uh, as I was doing at the beginning, Mm -hmm. um, the first two months, I mean, I probably would have scheduled myself to be up there a little bit more often, um, just so that I can, I, I I did want to host some events in some of the neighboring counties, even if it was mostly Bay County, uh, members attending, um, I did want to throw at least two or three events in some of the neighboring counties that we never had a chance to do. Um, as far as fundraising, um, 
not so much regrets. Um, I, I definitely feel like, uh, like I could have, uh, you know, maybe helped out a little bit more as far as, um, uh, you know, volunteering time with some of the events. Mm -hmm. Um, but unfortunately my schedule was a little bit hectic, especially towards the end of the year. Um, and I just wasn't able to be in there as, as often as I would have liked to be. Gotcha. Yeah. So let me ask then, <clears throat> mm -hmm. um, is there any particular reason that you, uh, that you didn't say, Hey, you know what, maybe I should resign from one so that I can give better attention to the other. Or were you, were, were your teammates happy enough with whatever you were able to give? Um, I, I believe they were happy enough with what I was able to give. Um, I don't, I don't think anybody would have wanted me to resign. There was no okay. discussion of that, any talk of that. Um, and it was, it, it was, um, November and December were, uh, extremely hectic for me in my personal mm -hmm. life. Right. Um, so again, I wasn't able to be as active. Um, but I was still in communications with everybody. I was still attending the meetings, okay. uh, jumping in and giving my two cents and just, you know, helping out where I could. Gotcha. Um, but yeah, every, everybody's very understanding. Um, th those guys up in Bay County, um, and, uh, everybody on the fundraising committee, you know, they, we were in communication. They knew what was going on for the most part. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Fair enough. What was your biggest achievement? And you don't have to, you don't have to say for either. You can just your biggest achievement this last term that, you know, you're, you're, you're on a podcast now. This is your opportunity to toot your horn. So <laughs> what is the thing that everybody should know? Like, wow, Richard did that. He built so that they, Biden <laughs> or no, it was Obama. I'm sorry. My bad. I don't think there's a single thing that I can say during the term, you know, I, I'm going to take credit for that. Okay. Um, there, there was, there was a lot of work from a lot of people and a lot of, unfortunately for the, for the region rep position, I kind of saw it as a supporting role. Mm -hmm. You know, I kind of, uh, I want to set Bay County up for success. Right. Um, you know, I, I think I did, I think that I helped them out. Um, you know, those guys, uh, those guys up there are all, you know, very kind. They're, uh, um, they're, they're all very friendly with me. So I, I think I did a good job with them. Gotcha. <laughs> I think I left them off better than they were. Um, and not, again, not to take credit for it because in all reality, um, you know, they're the ones there with the boots on the ground, putting in the work. And, you know, again, mine was a support role. Gotcha. Um, I'm used to, uh, in, in, in my personal life, I'm, I'm a sales manager mm -hmm. at a, at a dealership and, um, I'm, used to that kind of support role. Um, but I wanted to be, well, I wanted to take on a little bit more of a leadership role. And that's what led me to discussing it with Patrick, who's the current treasurer. Mm -hmm. um, I became the, uh, the deputy treasurer during the term also. Okay. And uh, I've been helping out with, with treasury work. And that's what led me to say, yeah, you know what? I want to take on this, this challenge oh, of being the treasurer. Okay. Well, that's a good segue into the treasurer role, uh, because I was not aware that you were the the deputy treasurer. So it sounds like because you were saying that Patrick is looking to run for the region two rep role, you're looking to run for the treasurer role. So you're kind of mm -hmm. looking to swap with each other. So it Correct. sounds like he's already brought you on, or you know the the um, the organization has brought you on board, and then you started working with him so that you could get a feel for what what that role entails. And Correct. then did he do, did, did you do the same thing with him and say like, all right, here's some of the things that are happening with region two and some, some of the things that you might need to know, or was he pretty much already familiar with it? So he was, uh, he's probably more familiar with region two than I am because okay. he lives there. Okay. Um, you know, but he was always my point, man. He was one of my first contacts up there. Mm -hmm. Um, so we were always working hand in hand. Um, he's currently a member of the, of their EC. Uh, even before he was on their executive committee, um, you know, we were always working hand in hand between him and Joey uh, and David to, you know, any issues going on, get them ironed out, help them mm -hmm. out with any support that we could. Gotcha. Awesome. So tell us about the role of, of state treasurer. What are the actual duties? Now, and, you know, because a lot of people, a lot of people may not have ever been a treasurer and they might just think, oh, you just mm -hmm. count money, right? Like, you know, you take all the dollar dollar bills and you stuff them in the machine and push a button and then it counts it and uh, you do it a second time. So you don't get your legs broke. 
Um, oh, wait a minute, wrong organization. <laughs> sorry, sorry about that, folks. <laughs> but uh, so tell us, what is this? What does the treasurer do at the state level? Um, I, I wish it was that easy. Um, there is a lot of bookkeeping. Um, there is a lot of accounting. There's a lot of keeping track of, you know, where the money's coming in and where the money's going out. Um, keeping track, you know, and uh, consolidating all the bank accounts, making sure that at the bottom, you know, all the numbers match and all the numbers add up. Mm -hmm. um, something that uh, Patrick and I have been working on is uh, a couple of separate spreadsheets so that we could better analyze how the uh, how the state is spending its money. You know, what is what isn't more effective um, uh, and essentially where the money is well spent and where the money uh, is coming in from so that, you know, people can focus on those things. Right. And um, that's kind of uh, what I want to focus on as treasurer. Um, I want to look at this as more of a uh, CFO role, okay. um, you know, a chief financial officer role. Um, so it's a little bit more strategic. I feel like uh, in the past, from what I've seen, uh, the role has been a little bit more of just let's count the money. Let's make sure that it's, you know, this is here, this is there. And um, it's, it, it's, it's very nice to be working with Patrick because we're, we're definitely just, you know, exchanging. Um, I feel like I laid some groundwork, you know, to set him up for success as region mm -hmm. two rep. He set up some of the groundwork to set me up for success as treasurer. Right. Um, you know, a lot, he's, he's, uh, he's absolutely killer with Excel. Um, so he's made a lot of good spreadsheets that we keep track of the money. Um, you know, uh, the, uh, most recently, uh, we had the, um, uh, the convention, uh, held a fundraiser to, for, for a convention theme. And he made a whole spreadsheet for that. So we keep track of where and how the money came in. Right. Um, and that's something that, you know, I, I looked at and I'm like, okay, you know, the money came in was, you know, that the, the whole chart kind of went like this. It was like one theme, then another theme, then another theme, then another theme. Okay. And then you started getting a lot of activity was towards the end once you had like five or six themes. So, you know, and, and especially towards the tail end. So it's, it's something that I'm thinking, okay, you know, how, how do we, how do we capitalize on that? Gotcha. You know, could we just dump out six themes immediately? Like, you know, do we just, do I just start talking to a few people and say, Hey, you've got a theme Yeah, Push for it. Let's go. Let's, let's try and get that theme on there. Things like that. I want to, mm -hmm. I want to be a little more strategic and I want to uh, set us up so that we're spending money smartly. We're spending it wisely because you know, you're not going to, you're not going to be successful unless you do make some money, right? It takes money to do anything that we want to do here. Right. Um, so I want to focus on, you know, wh where do we allocate our funds in order to, you know, to give us the best chance of success? Gotcha. So yeah, I, I, I agree. And I think one of the things, and I don't know that it happens or doesn't happen in in any of the affiliates or any of the state or even at the LNC level. But I do mm -hmm. think it's very important to take a look at the money and say, okay, what are the trends? And I remember a right. while back, uh, you know, and we're not going to get into it necessarily. It's just kind of, it reminds me of a while back, there was a chart floating around and somebody was like, oh, well, look, you know, since this particular group has come into the party, we're seeing this kind of a trend with the donations and the money. But then you look at a little bit bigger and you and you start like a couple of years and you start seeing that there's actually even a bigger trend. Right. Mm -hmm. So sometimes sometimes just taking a narrow view of it is insufficient. Sometimes you need a, a much bigger view. And um you know, and, and I think it's good that I think it's good that we're going to be, you know, that that you're looking to to do that, and that it's already been done uh, to some extent. So that's pretty neat. Um, okay, so it sounds like you've been taking a lot of uh, time to really prepare yourself for this role by by working with the current person that's in there, taking a look at some of the spreadsheets and stuff like that. So, in what ways are you not prepared, and how do you think, or how do you plan to overcome them? In what ways am I not prepared? I'm yeah. not, I'm not the best when it comes to the, the actual accounting, you know, make sure this money's here, make sure that money's there. The actual bookkeeping, I should say. Okay. Um, I'm not the best at, you know, the, the spreadsheets and things like that. Now, again, we'd still have that deputy treasurer role that, uh, that we discussed. 
And um, what, what we're preparing for is to have somebody in that role uh, who is good with that, who can, you know, lend that support. Um, we also have a lot of good people within the party um, that have been in that treasurer's position. Mm -hmm. um, Patrick being one of them, obviously. Um, but our chair, Stephen Nikayla, he was a treasurer previously. Mm -hmm. um, Suzanne Gilmore, who's currently one of our directors at large. Um, she was also uh, a treasurer. And um, they, they've, you know, they've been uh, more than more, more than gracious whenever, you know, anything happens and all, le lending their support, mm -hmm. you know, offering advice, things like that. Um, so, you know, I, I know I have enough people around me that we're going to go ahead and when I don't know an answer, um, you know, I'm going to know where to go look for it. OK. And more important than knowing all the answers, I think the, the important thing is knowing where to look for the answers when you don't know them. And knowing when to recognize that you don't know the answer and you should go look for one. <laughs> gotcha. You think you're good at that? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Good. That's something I learned uh, pretty young that, you know, re recognize your, uh, recognize your weaknesses, know when you don't know the answers and know where to go find them. And, you know, I, I think I could do that. <laughs> okay. Awesome. So what does success look like for you? And, and let me kind of try to define that a little bit more specifically. In, let's say you get elected to treasurer in six months, mm -hmm. maybe a year. What? How should the members judge you when they look at you and they say, hey, he's doing good. Um, what measure is it that you're telling us now that we should be on the lookout and maybe hold you accountable if you don't meet it? Um, absolutely. And I'm, I'm all about account accountability. Um, but I think, uh, you know, increased fundraising um, mm -hmm. for sure. And it's, it's talking about those trends that, uh, that you were talking about. We're still putting together all the spreadsheets and all the budgets to make this happen. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm, I'm, I'm doing that work now so that hopefully we could hit the ground running come convention time. Um, but this year is going to be an election year. Um, it's the midterms. Right. But, you know, usually on the off years, it goes down a little bit. And then during the election years, it comes back up. So you know, it's my goal to calculate exactly how much it has come up um, over over the course of time. Um, you know, what, what's typical projections increase during uh, dur during the midterm election years? And, you know, I, I, I always shoot myself for an additional, you know, 20 percent on top of that because I'm an overachiever. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I like to set some lofty goals for myself. And even if I don't hit my goal, you know what? It's it's a little bit higher than what anybody else projected. And I'm happy with that. Gotcha. So we should judge you by whatever goal you say, whatever you set, we should add 20 percent to it. That's what I heard. Right. All right. I'm going to do that. I'm going to say, all right. He said one hundred thousand dollars. So I'm going to add 20, 20 percent to that. And we're going to be like, hey. Did you mean, We're going to shoot no, for 120. Just kidding. Um, <laughs> uh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt. I just trying to be a no, little no, amusing. No, no, it's all good. Break it up a little bit, not be too, too serious. You know, it's it's Liberty Absolutely, Dad, yeah. not, you know, like Liberty Stiff. <laughs> so, all right, go ahead, man. No, so um, that's, uh, that, that's, that's going to be my overall, uh, you know, how, how I'm going to judge myself. Okay. Um, we're we're going to take a look, like I said, um, let – Something I didn't mention earlier, um, this past year was an absolute record breaking fundraising year. Mm -hmm. So I realized, you know, go, going into it, knowing that and that in midterm elections, you know, midterm election years, I should say, typically it does increase some, you know, I want to take a look at that and figure out, OK, again, where where is the increase going to happen? You know, I want to pinpoint a few a few certain things. Um, you know, our, our goal this next year is to host events, like I said, absolutely across the state. Uh, we're shooting for uh, three or four events um, aside from our annual business meeting. Um, and, you know, we want to make these absolutely fun fundraising events where, you know, we can uh, later brag about the fact that we were able to bring in X amount of dollars and, you know, we, we could list off all of our achievements. And I, right. I want that for everybody. I want everybody to be able to say, yeah, look, this is what the fundraising committee did. This is what the membership committee did. Um, you know, that this is how we grew the party. Got it. Okay. So you're going to increase the, the fundraising, uh, maybe even have mm -hmm. some more events. Are you in a position now where you can give us something more concrete to look at, or do you need a little bit of time to, to get elected, get in there and take a better <clears throat> look at things? So one of, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll give you an idea of one of the ideas. Um, and it, it comes from, uh, I'll, I'll give credit where it's due. It came from Todd Hagopian. 
Okay. Um, he, he talks about setting up a uh, fundraising backstop. Okay. So for the fundraising team, he said, you know, make it whatever, a thousand dollars, let's say. Okay. And the fundraising team needs $200 to host an event. Mm-hmm. We know we have this thousand dollars set aside for fundraising. So they take $200, they go and host an event. And let's just say that event, you know, generates $500 worth of income. Right. You refill that backstop with the mm-hmm. $200 and you take $300, you put it into, you know, back into the coffers. Okay. Um, if they, you know, if they lose money on that event, let's just say they spend the two two hundred dollars and they don't make any. Now you're left with eight hundred dollars, um, you know, for future events. Okay. But I want to I want to make it a little bit easier for people to function uh, within the party and for people to do their job. Um, I'll, I'll give you a I'll give you a quote. I'm sure. I mean, you you, you seem like somebody that's into you know like looking into history. I'd, I heard you, uh, you know, you, I, I know you like to talk about Dale Carnegie. Right. Um, Einstein, actually, um, it's a quote from him. He said, any darn fool can make something complex. It takes a genius to make something simple. Sure. And I'm, I'm not, you know, trying to claim to be a genius or anything like that. But I want to simplify the process for everybody to do their job mm-hmm. because it's, it, it's very difficult. You know, I'm, I'm not a, I'm not the smartest guy in the world, but I'm not the dumbest guy in the world either. Okay. And getting through the bylaws, getting through all the, you know, the constitution and figuring out exactly how to do things. It can be a little tedious and it can be a little right. bit difficult for the average person. So I wanted to make, I just wanted to make it very simple and uh, you know, make everybody be able to work to the best of their capability. Okay. Um, and l- like you said, hold people accountable also, because right. you know, the more freedom you give somebody, you know, you got to hold them to higher standards of accountability. Okay. So let's clarify a little bit here. You, you're saying mm-hmm. you want, you said everybody, you said people, you said, I want to make it more simple. What specifically, are we, like which specific people, which specific things are we talking about that they're doing that you want to make easier for people? Because these are, so th- these are things like mm-hmm. right now, it's, it's hard. Like I, I, I'm looking for something concrete so that in okay. six months, because here's the thing. What happens is a lot of times people will say, I'm going to, and I've done this, I'm going to do, uh, I, I'm going to increase our revenue. Okay. That's, mm-hmm. a, that's, a, everybody's like, oh, yeah, 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 that's totally. And so if I like increase our revenue by $50, like, well, I increased our revenue, but it's not really that impressive. Right. And, right. And, and, and I'm not saying that's what you're, you're talking about. So this is why we want something more specific, right? Like, okay, I intend to do this so that when I look later in the future, when party members who are watching or will watch this stream, look later, and then let's say you get elected and they want to come back in six months and they want to judge you, the less ambiguity that they have, the better off for you and everyone else, right? So is there is there anything concrete, very specific people, you know, whatever it is, can you narrow it down to something more specific? So treasurer term is two years, right. um, things that I specifically want to absolutely have, you know, done in the bank, absolutely nailed uh, within the first year. Um, something that I talked about with Steven was having $10,000 as uh, just reserve funds, okay. you know, $10,000, basically that's our savings account. We don't touch it. Mm-hmm. We don't go anywhere near it except for an absolute emergency. What do we so have I want to have, what's that? Do you know what we have now? Um, I don't know the exact number because okay. with a uh, convention going on, I know there's money that's tied up there sure. and, uh, and elsewhere, but I don't, I don't know what the exact number is. Okay. Um, but I want to make sure that we have, you know, that set aside. Um, I want to make sure that our, by that point, I want our fundraising backstop to be $3,000. Okay. I want to give them um, the ability to host some big events where we could fly people in, you know, whether it's, Spike Cohen, whether it's a Dave Smith, a Joe Jorgensen, whoever it is, I want them to be able to actually fly somebody in who's an expert at whatever the actual event theme may be. Okay. And, uh, you know, attract more people to come out to these events. Um, So within a year's time, you know, maybe, maybe we start off with something like a thousand dollar fundraising backstop. I want that to be closer to three to $4,000 within a year's time. Uh, because we've done such a good job fundraising. Um, and there's there, there's a couple of other things that, I, that I've that uh, i discussed with Stephen that are still very vague as far as um, having an actual, you know, concrete 
something sure, to offer sure, you right fine. now. No, you don't have to um, list it all out. That's fine. I just wanted, <laughs> I, I was just looking for a couple of things so that, you know, because mm -hmm. people are going to go vote for you here in like 20 days, 25 days, something like that. Yeah. And, um, you know, and so they're going to go vote and they might vote you. They might vote uh, whoever else is, is running or they mm -hmm. might vote Noda, right? And say, hey, I don't like any of the candidates. Uh, let's start over. Um, no, but I think one of the things that helps tell people or give them an idea of who they should vote for is some of these concrete things so that they mm -hmm. can say, all right, he promised this, you know, and, you know, or I don't want to say promise, but, you know, effectively, this was his goal. This is what he wants me to judge him by. And then later mm -hmm. we can come back and say, did you accomplish that? Hey, looks like my vote was well-placed. Kind of like right, the way the country should work, but doesn't. But that's a different topic, <laughs> totally different live stream. Definitely. <laughs> All right. So let's let's kind of start winding this down a little bit. So leadership. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that um, uh, that I want to point out is that treasurer, in my perception, is not always a role that people immediately think of as a go to position for general leadership. You know, people tend to think of it as like, you know, managing money, keeping the books clean, filing reports on time, so on and so forth. But it is an officer position. And so what I want to know from you is what role do you believe the treasurer has in reducing or resolving conflict? And there is no shortage of conflict in our party. Uh, so so in, in you're, you're more than welcome to just say, hey, look, here's my generic view of the, the role that the treasurer has. Or you can say, you know, more specifically, this is the role that I want to play as treasurer in reducing or resolving conflict? You know, I hadn't thought about that. This is the first time I've even thought about the treasurer as for, from that side of leadership as mm -hmm. uh, you know, the, the duty of uh, resolving or reducing conflict um, within the party. Um, I know it's something uh, that, that we've actually talked about before is, mm -hmm. you know, re reducing the conflict and, you know, being the bigger man and all that stuff. And it's, it's something I've had to work on, you know, my, sure. my, uh, uh, my background is, you know, to somebody says something to you and, you know, you, you, you gotta be the bigger man and you got to clap back sure. and, you know, right. Yeah. So <laughs> it's tough. Um, it's, it's tough. I get it. It is. It is. And it's something that I've been actively working on myself and, you know, biting my tongue and being more professional. Mm -hmm. Um, but I, I think, uh, I, I think, you know, coming from a leadership position, um, it's, you know, two, two things that I always focused on. Number one was empowering people to be better, um, but also just, you know, setting the example and being the example. Okay. Um, so that's something that, like I said, I'm working on and I'm, I'm hoping over the course of this next year, you know, I can do better mm -hmm. is just being the example of, you know, and I'll, I'll use you as, as, as an example. Um, you know, you, you always stay above the fray and I, I commend you for that. And I always look at, you know, something's going on and I look, you know, I'm, I'm about to type something and I look, you know, I see something that you posted and I think, you know, the deal handled it right. You know, let me bite my tongue. Let me, <laughs> I, <laughs> let, let me not be that guy that I know I want to be, you know, very much appreciated. <laughs> so for the record, I don't think people realize this, mm -hmm. but I might delete more tweets than I send out. <laughs> and, 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 and a lot of it is because um, a very small portion of them, I'm just like, ah, uh, that's not really funny. Like I think it is, or it's kind of, it's kind of dumb or I don't know, it doesn't make sense or, you know, you know, something trivial like that, right? No big deal. But there's good mm -hmm. portion of them where I do want to clap back and I do just want to be like, oh yeah, well, let me tell you. And, and, and it's <laughs> been a lot. And, you, you know, cause like people see what I tweet and a lot of people give me compliments and they're like, oh dude, you know, you, you handle things so well. And the reality is, I come very close to not handling things well because it can be absolutely frustrating because people can be so vicious. They can be so, uh, they can interpret your words in the worst way possible. And sometimes it feels mm -hmm. like they do it on purpose. Like you didn't even try right. to give me the benefit of the doubt. You just leaped right to this, the worst possible interpretation, right? So it's tough. It, it's tough. I get it. It's it's funny. I never I had never heard the term straw man, you know, like straw right. manning an argument. I had never heard that term before before I actually joined the Libertarian Party. And, <laughs> and I've 
And I've seen more examples of it since I've joined right. than I ever saw before. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. Like, like you said, people, people like to put words in your mouth and they like to just, you know, the, the least generous interpretation of what you said is, you know, what they go with when, when, when they, you know, feel like they need to be opposed to you. And right. Yeah. It's, it's, it's something uh, for sure. I definitely need to work on. But. Yeah. And, you know, honestly, I think it's something that everybody needs to work on. So, mm-hmm. you know, cause I, I see a lot and I see people that I've met people in person, you know, and talk with them and I'm like, oh, you're a pretty decent person. And, and this goes for like all sides, right? This isn't limited to any particular group or faction or whatnot, mm-hmm. but I've met a lot of people and then I see them online and I'm like, why, why are you doing that? Like, that's not the person that, <laughs> you know, some of them have been in my home, right? Not, you know, like stay, you know, come over. Uh, like I've had libertarians who are traveling sometimes and they'll stay overnight and, you know, we got a spare room or whatever. And I'm like, what, why are you doing this? Because that's not the person that I had a great conversation with, you know? Right. And, you know, or maybe I've met them at pork fest or at a convention or what have you. And I've had a lot of great conversations with people. And then, you know, they, they, they seem to lose it on the internet. I had a friend a long time ago. She was a hardcore feminist, okay? She was not a libertarian mm-hmm. at, at all. Hardcore feminist, okay? And But we were good friends. And I showed up to a party one night, and she said, uh, this exact words, she said, hey, there's awesome, cool DL, not internet asshole DL, right? Like, because at the time, <laughs> at the time, and this is, this is less than 10 years ago, well, no, mm-hmm. maybe right about 10 years ago, 10, 11, 12, something like that. But so at this time, I actually was kind of being, you know, rowdy online. And I was like trying to, you know, trying to own people like, oh, I got you. You know, I'm going to say this one thing and bam, yeah. you're going to be in tears. Like, dang, I can't believe you so smart and outwitted me. You know, I was like, <laughs> I was that guy. Right. And uh, but then I just started realizing it wasn't accomplishing what I wanted, which was people to change their views or to respect me more and say, you know what? I disagree with you, but you're making an interesting point. I'm going to have to at least give that some consideration, right? So it wasn't giving me that. So yeah, no, I get you. And I, I encourage you to keep trying. I, you know, use that draft tweet button, use it. (laughs) You're ready to, you're ready to fire out a tweet, type it up. Uh, I think how does it work? You you do, you go to delete it and it says, do you want to save it as a draft? Save it as a draft. Save it. Come yeah. back like an hour or two, maybe even the next day. It happens to me all the time. <laughs> Open it up and look at it. And sometimes you're like, mm, I, I I don't think it's as valuable as I thought. It. And then sometimes you're like, wow, I re- I'm glad I didn't send that because that was that was pretty rough and there was there was it wasn't going to go anywhere good, right? So yeah, I yeah. encourage you. All right, last question. This question is going to be my mm-hmm. fun question. Okay, so. I don't know about you, but I've been in interviews, uh, quite a few interviews, and a lot of them, they'll ask you some, you know, what seems like a really hokey, weird, just kind of like, what the heck kind of a question, right? Um, mm-hmm. So I just, I decided to do that. Now, the general reason, <laughs> the general reason is just to see how people can quick quickly think on their feet and give you a good answer and, you know, you know whatever, all that good stuff. So uh, I'm just kind of doing it for fun. So I'm not really going to okay. judge you by this. Other people, I, you know, I can't vouch for them. They might, they, you know, this, this, the answer to this question might tank your campaign. Okay. <laughs> okay. I don't know. It won't for me, but I can't promise for anybody else. So <clears throat> if you were a chicken that had to cross a road and choose only one, would you carry an AR-15 or a nine millimeter? <laughs> AR-15. All right. Why? Um, it's, uh, you know, no, no, no matter what you need to get accomplished. I mean, you, you can get an AR 15 on a shorter platform or a longer platform. Okay. Um, I'm just a fan of, uh, rifle slash carbine shooting. And, um, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's going to be a lot more versatile to get any job done versus a nine millimeter and nine millimeters, uh, more limited in the jobs that it could get done. Gotcha. Okay. All right. Well, you know, that was just for a fun, uh, a little bit of fun. So before we close out, let's go ahead and give you the final word. Tell us, you know, where people can find you. If they, if you've got like a website or if you've got a Facebook page or whatever, whatever you got going on, let people know, kind of give them your final speech here. Yeah. Um, if you're uh, if you're looking for me online, I got a Facebook. It's just Richard Perez. Nothing uh, uh, nothing exciting. Um, my uh, I have um, Instagram, 
uh, Richie Roma 72, mm-hmm. um, you know, mostly political posts and, um, Twitter is just a cesspool and I suggest everybody to stay away from there. Right. Um, but, but if you're going to follow me on Twitter and you, <laughs> um, it's at maybe Richie Roma, R I C H I E R O M A. Um, you can find me there. Um, no websites or anything like that. Not yet, at least. Okay. Any final words for your, uh, your run for treasurer? Um, not really, not really. I think, uh, you, you, uh, I, I think we talked about more than what I expected to talk about. Okay. I knew you weren't going to take it easy on me, but you know, you, you definitely had me thinking and, uh, you had me on my toes. So I could be, we, we went over more than what I expected, uh, that, that we were going to go over, um, throughout the interview. So, uh, commend you for that. <laughs> awesome. Well, I appreciate it. And I hope everybody that's watching got something out of it. Uh, make sure you connect with them. If you're not already connected, ask him even more tough questions. If you, if you can think of one that I didn't. And with that, we're going to go ahead and close out. That's all for this episode. If you're watching on YouTube, be sure to hit that and connect with me at Liberty Dad on Facebook, Liberty Dad Pod on Twitter, or send me an email to LibertyDadPodcast at gmail.com. I'd love to hear from you. To catch Liberty Dad episodes when they air, head over to Facebook.com forward slash free speech media, where the weekly episode airs Monday night at 8 p.m. And while you're there, be sure to check out the other free speech media shows. Prefer an audio format? Then head on over to LibertyDad.com or just search for Liberty Dad, all one word, on your favorite podcast app. Remember, if you're a champion of liberty, your business is people and your product is liberty. Have a great week. Catch you next time. And I'm out.